if I were to start a vlog channel in 2024, I'd focus on seven key points, which are really simple and really easy to implement. And in this video, I'll show you what they are. And I'll also go through four content ideas that you can use as beginners to really just create videos without having to think too hard about what you need to create. And these are four ideas that you can keep reusing over and over again for different videos as well. A lot of beginners who want to start vlogs often think that vlogs are kind of like a timeline of events, so what you did from the beginning of the day to the end of the day, and that works if you're not trying to be serious on YouTube and all you're trying to do is show your family and your friends what you get up to, but if you are trying to be serious and you are trying to be quite intentional with YouTube, then your vlogs need to develop, or deliver rather, purpose to the people who are watching. So you might be thinking, okay, but how do I do that and how do I get people to care about my content when I'm just starting out and making my vlog for the first time? At the moment, I'm just trying to figure out where I need to go and I'm trying to get across this really busy road to get to my brother's hotel. I think I need to get over there. Or is that a crossing up there? There's another street dog there. I think this is the right place. Yeah. If I ever come back to Tbilisi, I'm definitely going to be staying in this hotel. It's so sick. So the question was, how do you get people to care about your content? And how do you get people to watch your content when you are just starting out? And the first point is teaching people something that you know or something that you're really good at. Because if you want to do vlogs and <laughs> you're really keen to explore this style and you want to make something that's impactful and not just show what you've been doing throughout the day, if you, you can do that, but if you fuse it with something that is going to be of value to somebody and you can teach somebody something, then that's going to be a really great way for you to get into creating vlogs that automatically provide some kind of impact, have an impact and provide some kind of value to people. This also inadvertently helps you to choose a niche because if you talk about something that you're interested in and you teach people something that you know that you're actually really passionate about, then you've already kind of put yourself into a niche which is going to be easy for you to create content around. And there's always going to be people who are a slightly lower level than you are that want to know what they need to do in order to get to where you are. So teaching people something that you know that you're an expert in is a really great way to start off your vlog. So when it comes to the second point, if you think about the amount of people that come to YouTube and they're looking for a solution to a problem, they have a problem and they're trying to find a way to solve it, if your content from day one can provide those solutions and help people to overcome the challenges that they have as well when they're faced with those problems then it's just going to provide a lot more value and make your content impactful from day one and even if you wanted to document your day as long as it's done in a way that kind of inspires somebody along their journey then I think that's also fine and that's something that I started to think about when I started my channel so it's not necessarily a bad thing to show a timeline of events throughout your day as long as there's a purpose behind it. There always needs to be a purpose behind the video that is going to make somebody want to stay and watch and keep coming back to watch the video. Ready? Awesome, let's go! Imagine sitting down to film a video or going out to do a vlog and you realise that you've got no footage of substance. You look through all your footage and there's nothing there that you can really piece together into a substantial video and you've just wasted all those hours going out to film something and just not being able to use any of it. This is something that a lot of new vloggers will do and even though you're creating a vlog, you still need to plan the video and not wing it so that you don't end up wasting time and coming away with footage that you're just never going to use. 
As time went on, I started to do some level of planning, but it's only really within the last, I guess, year that I actually started to make it more of a fundamental part of my process. Before I started using Milano, I started to use other really useful websites to help me plan my videos. But I'm such a visual thinker and Milano just made it really easy for me to see everything that I was doing and lay everything out in front of me so that it was easier to keep track of my projects all in one go. I can visually brainstorm ideas and if I have a particularly difficult b-roll sequence that I'm trying to lay out and visualise then it's a really good way for me to mark out my shot list and just see everything in terms of how I'd place my b-roll over my voiceovers and it just makes it a lot easier. Also because I tend to create the same kind of videos all the time I've created several different templates so that I don't have to start from scratch so if I'm doing a comparison video then I have a template in a certain flow that I use for that kind of video if I'm doing a review then I've created a template for that but if you don't quite know where to start and you just want to have a bit of inspiration if you're trying to brainstorm some ideas or you want to put a mood board together then Milanote does have templates in order for you to start from. <laughs> no thank you, no thank you. All in all it's one of those tools that I actually can't live without now and it's become such a key part of my planning system so if you want to get started and you want to try it out you can set up a free account and start using it straight away the links in the description and thanks Milanote for sponsoring this video. So yeah, once you start planning your videos, you'll definitely see the value in how much easier it is to create your videos and how much less time you spend creating your videos. And it just makes the whole process so much smoother. I read a really interesting newsletter the other day by Jay Klaus and after reading it it just made so much sense and it actually made me think about how I talk about a given subject when I'm creating a video. We obviously want to make videos that have an impact and one of the biggest takeaways from Jay's email is to stop being indifferent and have an opinion and share it because when you have an opinion either way, some people will fully agree with you and share your content as a way of expressing themselves. And they'll also feel like they can relate to you. And that's how a strong community is built. Have you ever been scrolling through Netflix or Prime or whatever you watch your programs and films on? And then you're scrolling through and through trying to find something to watch and then you realize it's been like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour even and you've still not found anything to watch, you just think, can't be bothered. I've done that a lot, and I kind of liken camera gear to this. When you have loads of gear, and you're constantly buying different things that you think are gonna improve your videos, you can actually get to the point where you get completely put off making videos, and this is something that I used to, this used to happen to me, because I think when you have too much choice, it can really be paralyzing. Most of the time, you're gonna be able to find a very simple camera which is still gonna have amazing image quality, but it's gonna be so easy to use that it's gonna actually make you want to create, rather than having something that is too complex, that has a really steep learning curve, that just hinders you from getting started and creating any videos. So this last thing is something that I've pretty much done from day one, and something that I still do to this day, because it's a really great way to grow your community and to really understand your audience more as well, and that is by reading the comments and replying to people's comments. In your comment section, there are so many questions that get asked that you can start to create videos that people find helpful based on the questions that they've asked you. So the comment section is a really great place to start engaging with your community. So remember how I said that there are four content ideas that you can use as a beginner to create videos and not really run out of ideas. The first one is tips and this comes down to sharing insights about something that you're really knowledgeable about, that you have a lot of information about that could really help make someone's life easier. And so the second is transformations. You can essentially help somebody go from a result that they're getting that isn't as desirable as they would want 
to a result that is more favourable. So just helping them to achieve their goals. And then the third one is reviews. And you can create videos about products or services that you use in your everyday life that's related to the niche that you're talking about because those products that you use every day are most likely going to be extremely useful to other people who are in the same situation as you or doing the same things that you're doing. <coughs> and so the fourth one comes down to processes. If you know how to do something well, and you've been through the struggle of trying to work out a simpler way of doing it, then there's gonna be someone out there, there's gonna be people out there who are in the same situation that you were, struggling with a way to complete a specific task. And if you figured out a process which is a lot simpler and a lot easier, then that's also something that you can start to share.